And there's a reminder to the audience too, this will still be heard next week, Tuesday evening at Valdosta City Council. The next item is agenda item number five, CU-2014-08, the Centella Charter Academy. Ask if you would please present this case. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is a request for conditional use approval by Centella Charter um, Academy for a elementary school in R10 zoning that stands for single family residential. Um, as you can see by the map on the screen and in your packet, um, it is an irregularly large and L-shaped piece of property. Um, the aerial clears it up a little bit better. The western half of the L is associated with the floodplain of Knights Creek. Um, they are proposing to situate the school, which is only about 15 acres, on the eastern leg of the L, closer to um, Park Avenue. Um, this is bordered um, to the south by Jalen Uber Middle School, also the House of Hope Church property. To the uh, immediate north, this is a single family residential neighborhood. Other than that, everything like you see on the aerial is agricultural and forested type land. Um, not a whole lot of development activity out here, although the new pattern, the newest development is indeed the J.L. Newburn School. Um, they are proposing an elementary school that's not nearly as large as J.L. Newburn, um, but would eventually hold about 500 students. It would start off as grades um, K through 3, and then in future years they would add on the 4th and 5th grade as their student body grew. Um, subject property looks pretty much like this from the road. It's a forested area. There's a former farm field behind it. Um, pattern for character area. You see it is sort of mixed. Um, most of the property is a neighborhood activity center, which does call for more intensive, a little more dense type development, whether it be um, offices or residential, or even very low end commercial. Um, the bright blue is the parks, recreation, conservation category, and that is associated with the floodplain and wetlands of Knights Creek. And then to the north, you see the single family neighborhood with its designation of established residential. The more intensive commercial development, however, is planned for out on any part of the road. Staff reviewed this against the conditional use review criteria. Um, we found it consistent, but there's some things to note. On the site plan in your packet, you see a campus layout with a lot of room to grow. Um, of interest of what looks like an entrance driveway or private road from Park Avenue. That is actually a future right-of-way and is the future extension of Northside Drive, uh, which has been planned to be extended from J.C. Shack Road through this area all the way to Park Avenue and eventually to Primer Road, and that has actually been on the city's long-range plan since the 1970s. Um, so fortunately, we've got a development proposal that is within the path area, and they are kind enough to actually show the proposed future road um, and build their site plan around it. Um, so that's a, a feature I wanted to point out. You see they have delineated the um, immediately proposed buildings with some plans for future expansion. And as you see, there's even room for additional expansion in the long term. With all of that, and staff's finding a recommend, uh, recommendation of approval includes four conditions. Uh, number one is conditional use approval shall be granted for an elementary school grades pre-K through five including school recreational facilities, based on the general layout of the submitted site plan, and with the total building area not to exceed 65,000 square feet. If you were to look at the site plan in your packet, add up all of the square footages of both the immediately proposed buildings and the expansions, you would get a total of 51,000 square feet. So staff is recommending a cap of 65,000, which is a little bit higher, and that's based on the theory, anyway, of adding a third classroom building of 14,000 square feet or equivalent thereof at some point in the future. Um, if this condition holds and they wanted to expand beyond 65,000 square feet, they would then have to come back through the process where you re-review the conditional use. Staff's opinion on that is that it would buy several years worth of time, we think, to allow this use to sort of run its course and see how the undeveloped properties around it develop and then how this can be measured in terms of any possible negative impacts to the surroundings. Site design shall comply with all applicable LDR standards for such schools. In your package, the listing or supplemental standards for schools. Also, outdoor activities shall be limited to daytime and early evening hours, not exceeding 9 p.m. Number two, connect the city of Valdosta water and sewer service 
and reserve sufficient right of way for the extension of Northside Drive at a minimum of 80 feet wide. Number three, a minimum 50 foot wide landscape buffer shall remain as undisturbed along the northern property line. This is in compliance with some of those supplemental standards we talked about. But also additional native trees and shrubs shall be planted to fill in the bare patches of the existing buffer area as approved by the city arborist in accordance with the state's approved landscape plan. As you look at the site plan, and if you can, at least with me, I need some magnifying glass to read some of it, but they're along that entire northern border as required by the development code, they have to maintain a 50 foot wide landscape buffer adjacent to the single family neighborhood. Like you see there, it, there's a lot of existing trees. Um, this was the north boundary of the farm field. However, there are a few gaps within that line of trees. And this condition would simply require that as part of a landscape plan, which they would have to do, they fill in these gaps with native vegetation, much like what is already there. Uh, number four, Conditional use approval shall expire after three years if the school is not operating on site by that date. Um, they have a very ambitious schedule. They recently received their approval from the state and they are planning to be open next summer. So three years is plenty generous. Even if they fall behind one year, they still have a year to spare. Any questions on this one? Matt, you lost me on one thing. Okay. You said there, your upper end building area was 65,000 in this site plan. Correct, that's a cap. But you said there was also another 14,000 square foot building. Would it go on this site plan or would it have to come back? For okay. This site plan has shown both immediately proposed and future expansion. So it was 51,000 square feet. Right. So using some imagination, if they found room for another 14,000 square foot building to add in, to this site plan, they would still be compliant with that 65,000 cap. But if it was off this site plan, it would have to come back. If it deviates significantly from the site plan, correct. There's no spot for another 14,000, but if it's in this cluster area of the campus, we would deem that compliant. If they wanted to put it in the buffer area, that's a different story. It's applicable to the whole subject property. Um, this is in terms of a school facility. Um, there is still some remaining property immediately to the west of the school site that has the potential for redevelopment. Um, that could be parceled off, uh, perhaps rezoned, or developed as R10 would allow. Um, such as single family or another institutional use to come through with its own conditional use request. Lots of possibilities. So to be clear, the, the square footage building area limit is on the 15 acre Correct. school site. For the school the with this site plan. Right. And I have a second question if I may. The buffer uh, criteria, the landscape buffer, is that expected to have a they have to, it's required to be an undisturbed buffer, okay. so Mother Nature is to maintain it, but you've got to create it properly to start with, mm -hmm. um, and that's where the submitted landscape plan would mm -hmm. come in. Thank you. Commissioner? So I have one more question, Matt. This is going to be for a school and it is a, a use permit. And my question is concerning that detention pond. Detention pond, is that going to be required to have a security fence around it? It depends on the design, and that's an engineering question. But just like any detention pond anywhere, it's got to meet the standards of a pond. Um, fencing is triggered once your slope gets beyond a certain angle. Um, and I don't think they have engineered quite to the level of detail yet, but maybe they're close since they're on such a short timeline. Um, I do see their engineer in the audience. He might be able to answer that for you. Um, but I don't think they have gotten to that level of detail. But if it's required, then of course they'll have to do it. Well, required or not, being on school with kids, and we're talking pre-K, and I just think it's a good idea. I'd like to see that. I wonder if that needs to be added as a condition or well, may I add something? Mm -hmm. I thought. May I add, it depends on the, what the pond 
is if it's going to be a wet pond or a dry pond. So if it's going to contain water that there is right here, they're going to have to follow. And then hence, I'm, I'm sure the engineer will be able to address that. Um, so it might be just a dry pond. It only contains water and it trains for a short amount of time. But anyway, I will let this might be something that the engineer will understand. Yeah, I understand. But even a dry pond, it, it rains on school days. Okay, whatever. We'll, we'll, we'll grill the engineer when we get him up there. Commissioner Wells? Okay. Uh, number one, the road we were talking about was tied into yes. to a park area. Does that exist? That's not an existing road in the front. It's not existing. Um, there's just the city has a long range transportation plan, and the extension of the road is in the plan for the distant future. And Does this need to be paid if they're going to start next week? They, and, uh, whatever. Right. They, and you understand my question is, or you can't leave it dirt. No, they, the, the site itself, they have to pay their access. They'll have to pay up to the access. Right. Okay. And that, that, that wouldn't need to be a condition or anything for that. No, that's, that's a requirement as well. Okay. Second thing is, is the additional land that may be still left out there. You said you're limiting this to uh, fences, uh, for good. But what about like uh, a softball field or something like that? Would that be still considered in this footprint right. the, we're looking at right. here? The limitation is only on building area. On building area. Right. So is a softball field or? Would not be counted as part of the okay. 65,000. I'm just curious about that. No more questions, thank you. Right. Any other questions for the staff? There being none, is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak in favor of this application? screen behind you is a copy of the site plan um, that shows the speaker's house which is across the northern border um, it does show the road clear on the other side of the subject property and does not touch the single family neighborhood in fact down here the road is going to be
and to create us a, a natural pond too. And I don't want to ruin my pond. I don't, I don't want to be so close to my landline because there's going to be traffic going up and down behind my house day and night. I mean, I'm sorry, but I'm, I just want to know. And Mr. Chairman, the applicants are know? here. They might be able to help answer some of these questions from the speaker. So y'all don't know? And yes, ma'am, I did. I've got a copy if you would like, and I have a copy of their site plan, which is the same as you see on the screen, okay. as well as the rest of the packet. I'd love to have that. And that would be. Because, listen, this could be very expensive for us. If we have to put up our own fence, and then we won't have. We haven't even got water. That, that, we don't have no sewage, no water behind our house, or nothing. This is a problem, sir. Yes, yes ma'am, there's, there's lots of questions and there's some answers for all of us. It's just blooming over there where we are with schools. And here we are, don't have any water, we don't set your tank, it's wet down here. We did finally get a, a paper. road. It's a street, thank the Lord. Thank yes, ma'am, and there's yeah. water and sewer yeah. coming to your neighborhood, yeah, too. Yeah, it's going to be coming to, so if I have to get a fence, and I have to also try to protect my property and pay that too. Hey, I'm gonna have to move. Mr. Chairman, I'm sorry I think this is turning out like this. Yeah, if y'all don't understand, move in things don't work without, and I'm glad you let me know so I can at least come and see how I feel. But I'm not against the school, but I just don't know if, how that's gonna affect our neighborhood with all these three schools. What do you think about the high school's gonna be like? They're gonna have to go out on perimeter road, out of road, and 84. Did anybody listen? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Chairman, I think we got an opposition here and it should have been uh, in favor first and then opposition. That's what I called for in favor. And I asked her and she said she didn't know whether she was for it or against it. So I'll let her so go ahead and speak. Okay, that's what I Ma'am, are you, you finished with your comment? Nothing. You haven't asked me nothing, sir. I called for those speaking in favor of the request. I must not have heard you. But that was okay, but to make the first three agenda items, I said people for it speak in favor first. Then I'm speaking sorry. opposition second. I didn't hear you. I think so you're against this application? If it's, if it's going to cause our neighborhood, everybody in our neighborhood didn't come, but I did because I'm down here at the bottom where I, I get all everybody's water. And the county is out there all the time. We're helping us with our water. We have, we have problems with um, the ditches. I'm paying the city about that to this thing they don't. Ma'am, are you in favor of this application or are you against it? I'm against it right now. Okay, so if you're against the application, then we're going to have to ask you to sit down and then you can come back up and speak at a later time. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak in favor of this request? Yes, my name is Matt Belt. I'm with Global Engineering. We're the civil engineer for the project for the school. Um, and address is 3998 Inferno Road. Uh, I can answer most of the questions I've had already. Um, first of all, Commissioner Aker, there will be a fence, a uh, security fence around the pond. Um, excuse me, my eyes are not be there, but it's shorter. Uh, uh, as far as uh, having the, the buffer to the north against the, uh, the neighborhood that is, will absolutely remain intact and unchanged except for where we will uh, improve it and make it better. Uh, I will say uh, myself and the owners I've met with the city staff uh, previously to this meeting, um, we are with 100% agreement um, with the staff's recommendations and their conditions um, that they proposed. And as far as the North Side Drive extension shown on the site plan, we are actually working with the city engineering department to locate that in an appropriate place for the future extension to occur, not only on the subject property, but also across the street on the other side of Park Avenue, where that may come through in the future. Uh, so we are actually working with them to make sure that is in the best location to everyone's needs now. And if there's any other questions, uh, we'll have one I'll be glad to attend that. Thank you. Are there any questions from the commissioners of the speaker? There being none, we appreciate your time. Chair, let me go ahead and do some clarifying. The, the 
the area where the lady was speaking earlier is on the northern boundary. Yes, was it or the J C Shack boundary? No, it's the Is there going to be a road running right next to it uh, on that property? And how far off is it? And is it going to be buffered between uh, the road and that pond and their property or on that side? Can you answer that question? To a point, I, I don't want to put words in the city engineer's yeah. mouth, but in our discussions, he's indicated he does not desire for the road, North Side Drive Extension, North Side Drive Extension, to be against the residential parcels, the R6 parcels that you want. Okay. You want to pull the road away from those parcels. And I will confirm that that is absolutely correct. Okay. And so therefore, there will be a natural buffer that remains between that road and the properties, not just her property, but the properties that goes along that side. The entire campus facility will be between the road and the neighborhood. Okay. If you look at the site plan and you see where the trees are along that top northern boundary, yeah. Yeah. beyond those trees is the neighborhood. Yeah. And if you look at the zoning map in your packet, you see some of the streets in the neighborhood. Lonesome Dove Road is that southernmost street, and that's where Miss Stokes' lots are located. Subject property is in Carver South. Right, thank you. And I'll just add to clarify that the area of the school only and Kirk goes about halfway uh, into the property off of Park Avenue, so the school property actually- East-west. East East-west, correct. Right. Will actually be bordering that area where that, that exists. Okay. Thank you. All right, any other questions? Not with Richard, John. Is there anyone else in the audience that would like to speak in favor of this request? You cannot speak until you come up to the podium. Ma'am, in a few minutes. Is there anyone else in the audience that would like to speak in favor of this request? Is there anyone else in the audience that would like to speak in opposition to this request? the ability to, to guarantee anything. He's not the city engineer, so he doesn't well, control that. that. That's no problem. Okay. Well, I think what you may want to do is, I'm obviously, we're a recommending body only, and so this case will be, whatever the decision we make, either for or against, it will go to the city on October the 7th, 530, the Valdosta City Hall. And so there's a chance for you to get in to go to that meeting because regardless of what we recommend, they can overturn it either way. Well, at least I, I did get to hear what right. y'all had to say. Right. And I also know that there is an engineer, and I do want to know what's going to happen to these because they got numerous people right. down this street that's not going to be right, right up against us. Right. And I understand. They're going to plant these beautiful trees. I'm sorry about that. Right. Because I've had a field behind my house for a long time. Right, so this total development, we're, we're looking at it from a land use case, and so whether we approve it or not, it'll go to the city, and then the city will okay. approve it, and then if it goes beyond that, then it still has to go through all, your, all the permitting and engineering and everything else that goes along with any other development okay. that happens. So they will take all those things into consideration, but I do I recommend that you go to the, the meeting on October 7th, Okay. Um, it's a Tuesday at City Hall at 5.30, and, and then um, you'll hear from the um, City Council on how they determine that case, and they may be able to ask some additional questions. Thank you. I, I think my whole neighborhood has City Joe, City School Joe, like now, the free school, and we're not going to let you get Okay. But that's why I'm there all day. I understand. We'll get, we'll get better. Right. Time right. Time. But look at the problem. I, I don't care if it's going to be here. It, it took us a long time. Correct. 
Well, hopefully, if it, if it gets approved, hopefully there'll be some improvements in, in that particular area, and, and hopefully that'll be engineered into the, the entire project. All right, you're very welcome. Is there anyone else in the audience that would like to speak in opposition to this request? Questions for the speaker. I got one. Where, where is the house at uh, on that? <laughs> I'm off with one some dad on about the fourth place for her. It's in that row of houses. Here's the, the I, best I have on the R6. On the R6. <laughs> I have a um, above ground pool also. I am a complete fence step in, but up and like day, my mom. Really scared for the kids. No, I've got grandkids that's that age. So you're in where it says R6, <coughs> you're in that line somewhere, up in that line up there above R10 where it says R6 at the top, right? Yeah. Okay. That's it. Thank you. All right. Any other questions for the speaker? Uh, we appreciate your time. Is there anyone else in the audience that would like to speak in opposition to this request? There being none, I will now close the public participation portion of this request and turn the uh, discussion over, over to the commissioners. If there's no discussion, I will now take a motion from the commissioners. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion. I make a motion to recommend the application as presented with the, with the condition as presented by staff. No. We have a motion and a second. Recommending approval of that. Okay. We have a motion and a second um, on this particular request. Is there any discussion on the motion? There being none, all those in favor of this request or the motion, uh, please do so by raising your hands. All right, the motion passes unanimously. 